affect us all. But pain is invisible, so it's difficult to understand. By inflicting pain on each other in a controlled way, we're going to show you what causes pain and how to beat it. 10 million of us suffer from severe pain every day, and we spend over a billion pounds a year on painkillers. In today's programme, we'll be focusing on three of the most common problems. Back pain, sports injury, and osteoarthritis. Our first pain to beat is back pain. It's a problem that 80% of us will have at some point in our lives. And this epidemic is being fuelled by our sedentary lifestyles. Oh, perfect, mate. Singing with a broken string, tell me what you really mean. Are you ready? Do you know what you are? My name's Holly Minto, I'm 31, and I've been suffering with lower chronic back pain for nearly nine years. No, don't worry. Bad days are really bad. It's really crippling. Oh, catch, catch, catch! Yay! I find it hard not to be able to do certain activities with the children. Good girl, well done. They're going to grow up quite quickly. It is upsetting seeing Andrew play with the kids more than me. Sorry. Poor Holly. Time to get her back to our Harley Street Clinic to find out what's causing her pain. First, we'll give her a full health check. She's looking at the blood. We can see an awful lot of things sort of systemically around the whole body. Right. But it's red, so that's a good start. <laughs> not green. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not stopping there. We want to take a look at what's going on under the bonnet, too. Just getting you in the right position to start. So she's having an MRI scan, and the results are very interesting. We've got a disc that's kind of flattened and is bulging there. Holly's MRI scan shows a classic back problem. She has two bulging discs in her lower back. Discs are jelly-like material that cushion each bone in the spine. If a disc bulges, it can put pressure on a nearby nerve, and that's what causes the pain. But why are Holly's discs bulging in the first place? Well, the scans also show us something else. Can you see how these muscles here have got so much fatty mm. infiltration yeah. in them? It turns out Holly's back muscles are turning into fat, and that means her discs are taking far more weight than they should. Almost a third of that supportive muscle has been replaced by fat. But how can your muscles just turn into fat? Time to put our own bodies on the line in the name of science. I'm going to be immobilising Jack's arm for six days in plaster and measuring what happens to his muscle strength. It may seem ridiculous to be talking about my arms when Holly's got a back problem, but the principle is the same for every muscle of the body. And that principle is use it or lose it. Right, Jack, <laughs> before we immobilise this arm, yeah. the one thing we want to do is take a look at the size of this forearm. And there we can see 27 centimetres on that right arm and on the left arm, 27 centimetres as well. OK, so that's our starting point, because we're now going to immobilise one of those arms by plastering it. And this is something that you haven't done before? Never done it before. The truth is, we usually rely on a practice nurse for this bit. We'll take, take the uh, compression bandage and just do a little, little snip there for us. That's enough, that's enough. You're going to have to get the fluffy stuff, the cotton wool. OK. The plan is I'm going to get Dr Jack plastered. Well, from the elbow down, anyway. So he can't move his forearm muscles for a week. Yeah, there you go. All right, so which, which end are we going to start? So what you need to do is you need to, you need to put it around the, the wrist area, around and over, so underneath yep. your left hand a couple of times. I hmm. think I've seen better plastering from my cowboy builder. So that is rock solid. But, yes, it's true, I can't move a muscle. After some, well, armless fun, Dr Jack's now been in plaster for a week, unable to move his forearm or grip anything. Now it's time to see what's happened to those muscles. I'm just desperately not trying to cut your hand off. Oh, that's much That's really... <laughs> that's going to ruin the experiment if we've got no fingers left, isn't it? <laughs> but look at that, though. Oh, my goodness. Instantly. It's withered. So look at that, 26. <laughs> we've lost a centimetre just yeah. in six days. That's on the widest part, yeah, it that's is. That's incredible. Wow. That is absolutely incredible. The thing we want to know now is what's, what's, what effect has that had on strength? To find out, 
I've devised a nice little experiment for Dr. Jack. You are hanging from the good arm versus the plastered arm, okay? okay? Right. And I want you to hang on for as long as you possibly can, okay. and we're going to see what the effect is of no exercise on that plastered arm for six days. All right. You ready to rumble? It's sore, it's weak, and you're a very bad man. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Does that make me crazy? Whoa, man. Everything all right, Jack? It doesn't look that high, to be honest with you, mate. It's very high. This may look like a circus act, but it should show us how much strength you can lose after just one week without exercise. Oh, I see. Oh, oh. Ah. Right, let go when you're ready. Go. Good man. So first off, the arm that wasn't plastered. So this is the this is the good arm. Hang on, that's it. Keep hanging, keep hanging. You don't want to drop that far, let me tell you. Oh, it's horrid. Don't let go. Go on. Ah. Keep hanging, Jack. Go on, Jack. Go on, go on, go on. Good man, good man. That's a good effort. Fantastic work. Ah. He is strong. Oh, he's off. 46 seconds. That's actually pretty impressive. Do, do you know what? It was excruciating down here. I've been working so hard <laughs> pressing this start and stop button. I can't tell you how difficult yeah, that I'm is. Sure, I'm, sure you know what I mean? I'm sure the thumb went I, considerably I, more effort than I, my uh, arm. Keep it working. This time, we're going to test the arm that I expertly plastered. Remember, Dr Jack's not been able to use his left arm muscles for a week. Right, let's go then, mate. OK, here we go. Good man. Off he goes. <laughs> Ooh, oh, he's like a natural. And now he's got to use it to hang on to that trapeze for dear life. That's it, good man, good man. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Good, 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 good. Keep going, keep going. As long as you can, as long as you can. Keep hanging on. Keep going. That's it, good man, good man. Woohoo! 18 seconds. That is pathetic. <laughs> Compared to 46. That is ridiculous. Not being able to use this arm in the normal way that you would for gripping and for typing and for washing and cleaning and brushing teeth and all the rest of it. Extra muscles are being used. Those ones got fatigued very, very quickly as well. Yeah. So I think when, when we think about the spine, we mustn't just think about the muscles in the spine. It's all the muscles everywhere yeah, that get affected. It's the core it's, muscles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like your, uh, the muscles around the buttocks and at the front of the leg, back of the leg, they're all very, yep. very important in supporting yep. that. The tummy yeah, and the sides. I just want to tell you on one thing. Okay. You suggested, though, that you did washing up. <laughs> I don't believe that for a second, though. <laughs> he caught me out. <laughs> anyway, enough of all this hanging around. I've got to get down the gym with Holly. On your front. Perfect. What happened to Jack's arm in just one week has been happening to Holly's back muscles for the past nine years. But just lift that leg again. The less activity Holly does, the weaker her muscles are becoming. The weaker they become, the more her back hurts. It's a vicious circle. To cure Holly's back pain, I need her to do the last thing that she wants to do, and that's exercise. So really what's happening here, actually, just drop it for me. So you're actually not using this big muscle, this big bum muscle, OK, the, the, the gluteus, to lift that leg. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to lift it with much smaller muscles in the lower back. And that's why we've got the problem here, right. OK? All you do, just if you can, just lift your upper body. How's that feel? Mm. And then what I want you to do is lift the legs. OK. Keep your head Holly's up. got some hard work ahead of her, but if she strengthens the muscles that she's left to get flabby, I reckon she should be feeling better in just a matter of weeks. OK. Let's try that one more time for me. Now, keep it really, really tight. Don't, don't relax at any stage during this, OK? Now lift one leg off the ground. Two, three, four, and bring it down. And hold that position. And now the other leg. Two, good, good. We'll return to see how Holly's getting on later in the programme. Oh, relax. OK, pop that down and relax. That's really nice. How would it feel? <laughs> hard. <laughs> <laughs> Very hard. Next up, a pain that's top of the league, the sports injury. The most common pain we feel is one we've all experienced. It's what happens when you play football in the park. Strains, sprains, bruises. We call those soft tissue injuries. Greg, that is seriously out of order. These injuries cause acute pain, but they're simple to treat if you know the right steps. 
So we're going to show you what these steps are. First, we need a sports injury. Ah, Dr. Jack, just the man. Now his arm's recovered, it's time to put his whole body on the line. I've volunteered Dr. Jack to take part in an up-and-coming sport, mixed martial arts, otherwise known as cage fighting. That looks horrible. Welcome to the octagon of pain. This is where I'm going to put Jack tonight with Nick the Headhunter Chapman, a professional fighter 30 kilos heavier than Jack. Luckily, Jack has a black belt in martial arts, so he's in no danger. But one thing that he is going to be is in pain. I'm at the headhunter Chapman. It's nothing personal, Dr. Jack. Enjoy the evening. Fired up. Excitement, yeah. Just keep moving, mate. Keep moving. You're going to be all right. I've briefed the headhunter to target Jack's legs and give him as many bruises as possible to help me with my experiment. In the red corner, weighing in at 100 kilos, Nick the Headhunter Chapman! Looks like the headhunter's feeling nervous too. He's roped in celebrity cage fighting champion Alex Reed for support. And in the blue corner, standing five foot eight inches tall at 68 kilos, Jack Crindler! Oh, come on, Jack! Come on, Jack! Come on, go on! The doctor looks in trouble, Chapman dead in the legs. The crowd not best pleased. Actually, this is pretty serious. He's a big unit and he is hurting Jack. Come on, Jack, it's doing it! Dr Jack is receiving a classic sports injury. Soft tissue bruising, which will lead to swelling and plenty of pain, which is perfect for the next stage of my experiment. Straight into him, straight into him! He's almost at it now. I think he's almost at it. And switches to an armbar. Call this match a draw! I'm sorry, Nick. Amazingly, the ref has called it a draw. But what kind of injuries has Dr. Jack suffered at the feet of the headhunter? But there's some acute sports injury there, no doubt about it. How much pain? Everywhere. Serious pain, yeah? Everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's no doubt Dr. Jack's in pain. Great. That's what I need to show you how simple it is to relieve it. Inside Jack's body, the damaged cells and blood vessels are leaking fluid, causing swelling, which leads to pain. So what do we do about it? So the treatment is? Rice. Rice, exactly. Rest, ice, compression, elevation. Rice is a four-step treatment which, if followed in the first three days of a soft tissue injury, can really speed up the healing process and ultimately stop pain. Let's, let's pop the legs up on the chair for me. That's lovely. The first letter in rice, R, stands for rest. If moving his leg causes pain, this is Jack's body's way of saying, stop, I need to take it easy. Now we need that ice, and our favorite icing mechanism is our peas. Is peas. That instantly feels better. Good. I stands for ice. Putting ice on the injury can reduce swelling and therefore pain. But don't put ice directly on the skin and for no longer than 20 minutes at a time. Next thing we really need to do is actually get some compression. Okay. Lucky for you, I've brought a wonderful pair of compression tights. So they are really, really tight. C stands for compression. Compression brings down swelling by stopping fluid collecting around the injury. And there's one last step. So at night, I'll elevate this on a pillow. Exactly. But this one, I'll just keep perfect as is. E means elevate the injury above the heart so that any fluid moves down and away from the injury. Following rice can reduce swelling and therefore reduce pain quickly and effectively. It's nearly three days since Dr. Jack clashed with the headhunter. Time to check his sports injuries. Has rice 
Rest, ice,